The death toll from a powerful earthquake that struck off Taiwan's eastern coast this morning has risen to nine, with more than 800 injured, more than 120 people also trapped, nearly 80 in tunnels, with search and rescue teams scrambling to reach them. Morning rush hour, shaken by disaster, as Taiwan reels from its strongest earthquake in a quarter century. Widespread destruction in its wake, sending tremors and tsunami fears across the island and beyond. Heavy damage particularly evident in the eastern city of Hualien, near the epicentre of the powerful quake. Some buildings quite literally on the verge of collapse. Authorities have pulled out all the stops to rescue dozens believed to be trapped inside. Taiwan's earthquake monitoring agency had reported a magnitude of 7.2, while Japan's registered 7.7. It struck just south of Hualien City, a sparsely populated tourist hotspot known for its mountains, lakes and vulnerability to frequent earthquakes. The tremors also triggered huge landslides, blocking highways and complicating rescue efforts. Taiwanese President Tsai Ing-wen vowed to spare no efforts to reach those still trapped. Over in Taipei, residents recalled the early morning tremors that shook buildings all around them. The Pacific Tsunami Warning Center says the tsunami threat from the earthquake in Taiwan has now passed. Japan and the Philippines have both also downgraded their alert levels after earlier advising residents to move to higher ground. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida says Tokyo stands ready to provide any assistance necessary. And across the Taiwan Strait, Beijing has voiced its concerns over the earthquake, with tremors also felt in some parts of China, including Fujian, Guangdong and Shanghai. From our CNA's Victoria, Jen joins us live from Taipei. Victoria, of course, the pictures we're seeing give us a fairly good idea of the kind of destruction caused by this earthquake. But what more can you tell us about the extent of damage? Well, so far we have already experienced 150 aftershocks and some with the magnitude of five. And so it's very, very big earthquakes um, that it ha- has happened today and that it's, um, se- Seismology Center predicts that there's going to be expected to, there are going to be more aftershocks in the coming days and some may be uh, with the magnitude of seven. And so far the public has been advised to uh, stay away from going to mountainous areas because it's, being, it's going to be very dangerous with the um, amount of aftershocks that we're going to be experiencing. Now, this is the biggest earthquake since 1999, when a magnitude 7.3 earthquake struck central Taiwan, and it killed nearly 3,000 people and toppled more than 10,000 buildings. Now, experts are saying that the reason why this earthquake did not cause such massive uh, damage and devastation as the previous one is mainly because of the epic center is located uh, at the, uh, off the coast of uh, Hualien County and so it's not on land and so that has helped to minimize the damage still at least 28 buildings are were damaged or partially damaged, as we know it, and major highways has been destroyed, leading to Hualien. And we know that the train and train services have also been affected. Um, and th- this disruption of transportation is already causing uh, many people um, who are planning to head down south for the tomb sweeping holiday. And, but the authorities are warning people not to visit the tombs in mountainous areas for their own safety. Uh, Victoria, of course, natural disasters like the one you are seeing, they often attest for governments in terms of preparation and also their response. Now, President Tsai Ing-wen, she ends her term next month. Her administration, previously criticised by the opposition Kuomintang, 
for how they handle the COVID-19 pandemic. How has her government responded so far to this crisis? Well, so far, the reaction has been very swift. Um, We know that the troops were deployed immediately after the earthquake uh, to to help with the search and rescue mission. And also, President-elect William Lai has visited Hualien, which is where the Epic Center is located. He has also um, he has also promised that he is going to do the best he can to help with those affected by the earthquake, and he has also promised that he is going to start reconstruction uh, immediately, and also to provide subsidies for those who uh, lost their homes. Now, this comes ahead of his inauguration on May 20th, so he is being watched very closely, as well as the DPP government. And on top of that, American Institute in Taiwan chair, chairperson Laura Rosenberger is currently visiting Taiwan to celebrate the, the 45th anniversary of Taiwan's Relations Act. So um, there is definitely added pressure on the DPP's government to cope well with this uh, quake situation. Back oh, thank to you. you. Oh, thanks for those updates. CNA's Victoria Jen, they're reporting live from Taipei.